Hello everyone, as you introduce, I'm j i a n Choi, a PhD candidate majoring in polymer engineering at Korea Institute of Science and Technology. Today I'd w o u like to talk about the research on the dispersion of an ion exchange ion o m e r for fuel cell application. I'll talk for about 10 minutes. If you have any questions, please leave them on the question board. Let me first explain the anion exchange membrane fuel cell, namely AMFC. If you look at this figure of the operation principle of AMFC, you can see that hydrogen oxidation reactions occur at the anode, while oxygen reduction reaction takes place at the cathode. This electrochemical reaction converts chemical energy into electrical energy. which characteristics of AMFC received recent attention as a promising energy conversion system. As it is more energy efficient, it is more advantageous than conventional internal combustion engines. Moreover, it doesn't emit pollutants and is less noisy. However, there is a problem with AMFC. When hydroxide ions are exposed to carbon dioxide, bicarbonate is produced which decreases the p u r e cell performance. Also, the durability of the polymer materials in alkaline environment is a big issue. Let me expand more on the polymer materials for AMFC. As we know, both the membrane and the electrode ion are polymer materials, and they both conduct hydroxide ions. However, the membrane must have a low gas permeability and high mechanical strength. Because gas applied from both sides of anode and cathode should not be crossed over. On the other hand, the electrode ion amers must have a high gas permeability for electrochemical reactions. but it doesn't have to have high mechanical strength. Furthermore, these ionomers work as a binder to prevent the membrane and the electrode from falling apart, which makes the i n t e r f a c i a l compatibility with the membrane important. As you can see, there is a growing trend in the research on polymer materials in the AMFC field to this day. To improve the alkaline stability and the hydroxide ion conductivity, researchers are studying various polymer structures by using different kinds of polymer backbone and cationic groups. So, what are some issues regarding polymer materials? One is the chemical degradation of the backbone in alkaline environment. The a r y l i t h e r group is used to increase the flexibility of the membrane, but it is vulnerable to hydroxide ion attack. In particular, it breaks more easily when there are electron withdrawing groups. So polymers including the a r y l i t h e r structures such as p o l y s u l s u l p r o n e and p o l y p h e n y l a n e oxide cannot last long enough. The other issue with polymer materials is about the electrode ionomers such as the adsorption of phenyl groups in the catalyst layer. The phenyl adsorption on platinum catalyst blocks the electrochemical active site and decreases the AMFC performance. Since most AMFCs use the hydrocarbon polymers which contain the phenyl groups, this becomes a problem. So, this is what I'm working on. To address this issue, I chose a polystyrene backbone for the electrode ionomer. Polystyrene doesn't help the a r e l i t h e r structure and it consists of linear carbon-carbon bone which make it strong in alkaline environment. Although it is hard to apply the polystyrene as the membrane due to its weak mechanical properties, I use it as an electrode ionomer with alkyl ammonium on the benzyl group of it. So I made a new structure of ion o m e r s with various molecular weights. And then I tried to check the effect of the structure on the electrode by controlling the IK side chain length of the ion o m e r s First, let's look at the overall synthesis mechanism of the new ion o m e r structures. The polymer backbone was synthesized by radical polymerization with benzene s u l f o n i c chloride and styrene monomer. The radical polymerization is advantageous to control molecular weight, so I made various polymer molecular weights from 1 million to 6 million gram per mole. The next step I did is acylation and reduction reactions to obtain the functional group. During the acylation process, I controlled the side chain length according to the number of carbon of these acylation chemicals. Through the colonization, the bromine is replaced with the coronary ammonium. 
Finally, I prefer the polymer as ionomer dispersion in alcohol water mixture. So with this structure I did an analysis, here is the result. Let me show you proton enamel spectra for synthesized polystyrene backbone with various molecular weights. I named each sample according to the number of average molecular weight. And I made sure that all five samples have the same polymer structure. As you can see here, when I analyze the peak of each step, the polymers have successfully synthesized. Let's move on to the next result, the polymer characterization. I got the 5 samples of polymer with various molecular weights ranging from 1 million to 6 million gram per mole in the first figure. And I confirmed that sample 63 with highest molecular weight is a non-uniform dispersion, and it is not suitable to be the ionomer. The second figure shows the ion exchange capacity, namely IEC. IEC refers to the amount of functional groups that are capable of conducting hydroxide ions per dry polymer weight. Depending on the molecular weight, there was no significant difference in the IEC of the samples. However, depending the side chain length, a shorter sample has a higher IEC than longer one. The location of the cations from the backbone has a significant effect on IEC. Also, the polymers has a good summer stability for common operation temperature below 100 degrees. Next, you can see TEM images of hydrophilic hydrophobic morphology according to the side chain lengths. Both images show a phase separation morphology. The right regions indicate the hydrophobic polymer domains, while the dark regions indicate the hydrophilic ion domains. What we know is that hydrophilic domains help the ion transport, water, and gas permeability. Sample C6 has the proportion of longer hydrophilic morphology. So I expected that sample C6 would show better performance for fuel cell application. Let's look at the result of dynamic light scattering analysis. This analysis shows the agglomerate polymer particle size of nano dispersion. As the polymer molecular weight increases, the total length of a polymer also increases and the agglomeration of polymer is extended. So I looked into how these ionomers affect the fuel cell operation. I used a commercial Fimatec membrane to measure the fuel cell performance. The highest or lowest molecular weight showed low performance for different regions. This is because S10 does not form the ionic fuel sheets due to too short polymer chain, and S63 shows the non-uniform dispersion. That makes the catalyst layer incomplete. For the other samples, I confirmed that the three ionomers appeared similarly up to the ohmic region but the performance decrease in the mass transport region as the molecular weight increase. If the ionomer particle size is large, it may degrade the performance in the mass transport region, because it is difficult to discharge water or permeate gas. So I checked that sample S29 has the optimal molecular weight in this study. Moreover, you can look at this second IV curve according to the side chain length. Despite the same backbone and the same degree of colonization, this graph shows difference in performance. Sample C3 with higher IC indicates lower cell performance, I guess for two reasons. First, the high IC causes water management problems in the electrode, increasing the overall resistance and reducing the performance. Second, with respect to the assumption of the platinum catalyst at the distance between phenyl and cationic groups, sample C6 with long side chain is more stable. I am going to find out which one has the dominant effect through the further research. Finally, I compared the C6 ionomer with the commercial Fimatec FAA ionomer. This shows similar performance in the activation region, but there is a significant difference in performance from the ohmic to mass transport regions. In terms of the mass transport region, Polystyrene ionomer forms suitable electrode for complex water management. In addition, as a result of long-term test, the RLSL3 polystyrene ionomer showed more stable performance than polyaromatic based FAA ionomer. So this is it. As I showed, I made a new polystyrene based electrode ionomer for AMFC. 
Through the Kupfer test, I figured that the molecular weight of the electrode ionomer affects the particle size of nano dispersion and the electrode water management in AEMFC. Furthermore, I checked that IC and phase separation morphology according to the side chain length were the factors that affect the fuel cell performance. As the RL cell free fluid style and showed better durability than commercial ionomers, they will be used with various anion exchange membranes. Thank you for listening.